place because like California is like population what like 35 million something yeah, like that like, whatever like, but if you base yourself percentage wise right so yeah, percentage wise pretty, yeah that's a yeah. Large, like i mean yeah it's so there's a big asian community and then mm. there's all the like Jamaican. the people having ch- like yeah. there's so a, like, and there's a hey, big mix but community hey, here asian too right asian is not yeah. the majority like a, yeah. yeah okay yeah 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 so uh okay. yeah that's what i would say so i would say about 500,000 and again wow. give or take but it's 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 pretty big yeah. it's pretty inth- like basically here it's funny because when i talk to other like Asians in mm. in the states, I explained to them that when you come here, there's like a fast food uh, Asian fast food pla- places mm-hmm. like pretty much Everywhere. all over really? the city, yeah, yeah, yeah. all oh, over the city. It's like, like our versions of bodegas, basically. Right? Yeah, like all over the city. It's like so if you want to cool eat here, though. Asian food <laughs> in Montreal, it's easy. like it's wherever you want. Easy, it is easy, kinda. easy. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, uh, but when you go to Miami, but there's a big Asian population in Miami. Yeah. 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 I mean, there is a lot of spots, but you have to drive, yeah. you have to yeah. Yeah. whatever, it's like right? It's pervasive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty much yeah. everywhere, right? Really? You know. So, anyways, oh, it, it's, nice. we're good to go. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Oh shit! Which number are we at? Uh, hang on to your to, to your chairs. We're okay. we're going in, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just pretend hang on to your microphone. <laughs> <problem. laughs> Let's Houston, remember that Kate, Kate, Kate came in and saying, "Don't you do this in French, you know? <laughs> Can I leave? Oui, <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue à le podcast épisode 104. Oh my god, my god. This are 201. 201. Uh, we we celebrated our 200 episode last week. And we week. forgot which episode was. Yeah, balloons. <laughs> M- Miriam it's made really us sad. a surprise. She bought balloons for us and whatever. Know. I didn't know. Yeah, we arrived with balloons, balloon, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, that was a nice Anyways. Anyway, you've got a good one. It was nice. It was nice. Nah. Okay. You know, <laughs> Je suis Steven Charles. Gabi Michel. Guys, uh, today's episode is going to be in English. Why? Because we have two. <laughs> yeah, because of Kate. Yeah, because, because of Kate. Kate. It's me. It's my fault. It's so, so, so. Anyways, guys. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, like we say every time, like, subscribe, comment, do everything you need to do. Talk, talk, talk about it. Don't talk about it. We don't care. We just want people to, to people to talk because that's what we do. Um, and yeah. So, without further ado, I'm gonna let our guests introduce themselves. Mm-hmm, and guys, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you don't know to don't need to go into all the details, but just tell people general introduction. Little, general <laughs> introduction. <laughs> but we're gonna get into the details a bit later. But yeah, go ahead, Kate. Like, like my birthday or anything? I just want to get uh, uh, <laughs> so, so, social social security number. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not all the numbers. Flight path. <laughs> Door lock. <laughs> Hi, I'm oh Kate Jerkins. God. I'm um, Chief Business Officer for Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey. First time to Montreal. We're here to talk all things Uncle Nearest with the with the Montreal this week. We're really excited. So yeah, get the, yeah. get the U.S. Embassy involved. Exactly. And everything. Yeah. We're going Big time. for it. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Lucia Creed. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey here for the first time, also from Oakland, California. That's Welcome. amazing. Welcome. <gasps> we have a 49er fan out there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan did of 49ers. I'm not a, I'm not a, Uber? No, it's not us. Oh, okay. You okay. sure? And, I like, go eat it, and if it was, I would have refused it. I, like, I, I like actually would wearing. like to borrow his hat. So now I'm we a, have. I'm now a, we're in a feud. Uh-oh. Oh, God, he's got you'd look too Christmassy, though. <laughs> I can't wait. Get it that. out of the way. Giants fan over here. So, no. so wait, who's your Close. team then? Giants, Giants. Oh, the New York football giant. Let's be nice. Ah. Let's be nice. That's yes. okay. That's my father-in-law's team, so I have to root for them okay. and be nice about them. Yeah. I won't. Yeah. You have <laughs> by to. Affiliation. By choice. Yes. Yes. By choice. Uh, uh, you're not, you're not being forced obliga- into anything. It's a family obligation, but I grew a Niners fan because that's where I grew up up oh, there. Oh, you're a Niners like, fan? Yeah, I really am. But Kate, you're that's a big like, sports Yeah, this girl. is, yes. Like, I see your post and like, it's like... We are all sports all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. So my father-in-law was a sports director for um, NBC in Tulsa, Oklahoma for 30 years. Wow. And my dad coached football and coached football with like Mike Holmgren, who's now, mm-hmm. who coached the, he was head coach of the Packers. He coached for the 49ers. Amazing, yeah. He was with the uh, Seahawks. And so... That's like my so family. Technically, it's not your fault that you're a it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not your fault. It was just basically kind of like you exactly. know, it was in the family. But here's and the thing: I've been in LA for longer than I've lived in Northern California. But yeah. I, I will not root for the Dodgers. I don't root for the Rams. Really? No. The only LA team I root for is LAFC, which is our football, our, our soccer club there. And what about the Lakers? 
I root for the Lakers now because I love LeBron. I like literally like never rooted for the Lakers, but I love LeBron because I'm a Lakers LeBron. fan. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, my husband's That's a Clippers funny. fan. So <laughs> you have you have this in common because cool. he loves LeBron too. Don't you, that's not true. He's I'm, a LeBron, I'm, a, I'm a LeBron oh hater. My, God. Wow. my goal is to, is to talk to LeBron. He's just and tell what him do you want to talk to him about? I want to tell him that he's really good yeah. at that basketball thing. Yeah. But he, he doesn't touch my Jordan. I'm he's, sorry. He's just... Oh. I'm sorry. I mean, did you see that thing the other night where he like had scored the most points mm-hmm. ever? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Mm-hmm. No, don't, don't pay any attention to him. Yeah, I saw that. I, was you know? big I saw that when everybody on the court was like passing him the ball and the, the, and the other team was like, here's, 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 uh, the, here's the highway to the basket. I really hurt this shit up that night. <laughs> yeah, all such a hater, yo. My husband and I kept thinking, what if he misses it by two? They, they should have fallen. And then everyone oh. goes back the next Thursday, right? Like, waiting for him to hit one, one. shot. Okay. Denzel has to cancel <laughs> yeah. his fights. Jay Z has to cancel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like we Yo, have to wait two days to get this. Yeah. Nah, nah. Lobos puts their whole party on pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had a party they afterwards. Nice yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say something? Okay, I'm. I'm, 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 nice I'm leaving party. alone. The cake was ugly. The cake was ugly. The cake was like. Uh, what, what's the number of uh, points? We're like 40,000, whatever. Right. Aww, like, guys, come on. You could have done a very cake. I'm sure the cake was really good, though. <laughs> Maybe good. Let's not humor him in his hate. Just, <laughs> keep pushing. I love LeBron. I love it's LeBron. Exciting. I love LeBron for everything he does. Like, I'm a big... Our community in Los Angeles is really impressive, right? And, like, you see him as a dad and what he yeah. does, and I just think 100%. He, there was stuff I hated that he did when he was younger, but everyone, when they're young and don't know exactly we what they're doing, make makes up. mistakes. That's but emotions. I think he's really Nobody's made up perfect. for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, listen, I was the... Ultimate Biggest. LeBron guy, like when I was like Biggest 18, fan. 20 years old. Yeah. Like I had all the jerseys, his first basketball shoes. Like I was like relentless okay. about it. And then he went and to And then Miami. when he left, like an angry ex, he got super pissed. <laughs> I feel like that, what's the saying? Like don't hate the player, hate the game? Like, I'm sorry. You should, you you're talking right? to the wrong one. You're talking <laughs> to the wrong guy. Even him in his like whatever movies that he does, his and cameos he was young and whatever. When he, did he that. says it. He says I made a mistake. No, he it was not. a mistake. Fair. It was a mistake. People were burning his jerseys in the streets. Remember? Jeez, yeah. Really? Oh yes. Yeah. I, I don't there know. was the there was the big uh, mural of him, Nike mural. Like yeah. it says witness. Yeah. Back when he was in Cleveland and people were staying in there, Aww. they were burning his jerseys. Because he left. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because he's from Ohio. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to partake yeah. in this conversation. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. No. You're from there. You're no. supposed to. You got drafted. It's destiny. But, but, but at the same time, it's actually, we're watching that. He Have you seen the golf like documentary that's on like Netflix and Hulu Which right golf now? documentary? So there's a documentary right now that's following the guys on the PGA Tour <laughs> and then talking about the guys that go to live. <laughs> the um, Saudi Arabian yes, tour. Yes, yes, I heard and about it. So it's I heard similar about it. conversations about people leaving the PGA to go to live and they're mm. like, we're doing it for the money or for our family. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron just did like what he thought was right at the time. I don't, he was young. <laughs> I'll sit here all night with you on LeBron. <laughs> Plus, when you don't, and Stephen is like, and I'm just gonna be in the corner and listen. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, and Stephen A. Smith brought out a good point. Mm -hmm. The reason why the All Star Game is what it is today, which is Uh not good, Mm -hmm. right, is because of LeBron. Because he he refused to talk about the slam dunk contest. Yeah, the slam dunk contest, which had nothing to do with what we were talking about. No, sure, go ahead. But LeBron, LeBron is good. Like, let's not. Let, let's keep it a buck. He's a game he's, game. he's a good guy. Yes. He did a lot of good stuff. A lot. He's a good player. He's yes. also, by the way, he hasn't dipped his toes in a lot of controversy outside of that stuff. Thank right? You. He's actually, from a role model standpoint, you can get into a lot of players, all players, but he's not surrounded by a lot of controversy. Yeah. I agree with Very that. I, you know, I agree. So I, I agree some, with that. I, I, I For as long this, that he's been playing, see too? See him as, like, you know, yeah. when you saw on the yeah. court his mom come, his wife come, his kids, yeah. like, to me... That, that, that it, speaks it, to I, something. I think it does. He's the yeah. Obama of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... So since we're talking about Speaking LA, of Obama. No, no, no. speaking of Obama, yeah. um, I did meet I, Michelle Obama once. That was yeah, brief. she did. Was oh brief. really? I it saw a pic. Yeah, there was a picture. I wish picture. I had more time. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah Michelle, that's, if you're hearing this, I wish we list. had more time. <laughs> Shout out to Matt list. Carlson. Yeah. I hope Woo-hoo. she's gonna run. Uh, oh, I hope she's. Think, I, I hope she's gonna run. It's not gonna happen. I don't think so. Happen like I think like she knows what it looks like in the White House for eight. I don't think she doesn't seem interested to. Yeah, no. But she would win. That's what sucks. I don't know. She would win. I don't think. I don't think. I as an American. And sadly, I right now I don't know that she would. She would. She would. You think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't know I think you give America too much credit. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't to feel, hate her. I personally don't feel no. that America no is ready hate. to see a woman president. Personally. I clearly aren't. But also, no. if oh. you look at, if you read a lot, 
electing Obama was an amazing thing. Yeah, but there really is a lot shit, of people yeah. you will say that will also see like him being our president for two. F- I feel like we're getting really political for two full terms. People have got very uncomfortable with it. Of course, yeah, sure. and yeah. You, so yeah. that's what I'm and saying. You saw the results in of Africa, the two. Yes, afterwards. exactly. Yeah. But can I? Sadly, but, it was because I. I mean, my daughter was. When he when he was elected, I think she was six months old. She was sleeping in her crib, and we woke her up and like said it to her, like this really? man is our president. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. were so She's excited, like crying. About so hopeful. Yeah, I was like, I wanted to be able to tell her that, and we were so That's hopeful, funny. but not the whole country didn't see it that way. So, so you know what I think? It's like I do give America America more credit than you guys think because hmm. um, as a Canadian, yeah. I I travel a lot, obviously, to the mm. states, so I see like. Everything that's going on, like with another like sort of view and stuff, different, start, start, different mm-hmm. yeah, a different perspective. And there are different yeah. areas of the United States. So yes. You're seeing a yes. lot from of different perspectives. Yes, yes, different, yes. yes. State state. So, anyways, me, the way I see it is, I think like people are more in line than people think. Like right now, there's a lot of division because of like, oh, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, and you yeah, this yeah, and you yeah. that, and or oh, you decide to not wear a mask or wear a mask. And, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you're a demon and right. whatever. Like guys, we need to all sit down and talk. Like you yeah, know, like absolutely. But but my point is is that I think we're when somebody speaks on a podium and makes sense, I think the people would will, will like yes, come together. I, I that, agree that's with that. what I that's what I think. And I think yeah. I think yeah. people like um, so that, that's what I think. I think like some people might be racist still, but I think when you sit down and you actually talk to them, they're like. Oh, I'm ra- I'm racist for nothing. That person actually speaks my language. It's, also, and I, it's like an know? unconscious bias, though. I don't yes. know that people are consciously mm-hmm. racist. Like, yes, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. yes I agree are, with that They're too. just uncomfortable with certain yep. things that they're not. Yep. They haven't seen before or mm-hmm. haven't yep. known before. And I think yeah. that's it, part when of the you problem. speak to individuals, they're mm-hmm. much more clear-minded. Mm-hmm. When you put people in a group, yeah. it changes. Like I, I um, yeah. there's comfort in have numbers, a, right? a nerdy moment. I studied like comparative religion in in mm-hmm. college, okay. and there's a philosophy or a theory called collective effervescence. Mm-hmm. It's the feeling you get when you're at a concert yeah. and when you're at mm-hmm. church, when you're at a sporting event, yeah. when yeah. you're in a mob yeah. mentality, yeah, 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 yeah. right? When you are by yourself, you think clearly. But when you're surrounded by other people who are experiencing That's something that makes them feel greater than themselves, yeah. you're so influ- easily influenced to do something yeah. that yeah, you that wouldn't do if you were thinking clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's part of what happens in, yeah. in well, American mentality. culture, in anyone's culture, yeah. right? People individually are good to their neighbors no matter what color they are, mm-hmm. what right. gender mm-hmm. they are. But when but. you put a bunch of people together and they have fear that mm. another group is going to come in and take something away from them, they it took changes our the dynamic. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I I think it's a compli- uh, compli- compli- complicated thing. Sorry. <laughs> it's a complicated thing. Th- that's my English, word. guys. That's my English. That's <laughs> the, my French. English. the French guy. It's better that's than our French. That's we'll go to French. I'll just <laughs> 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 But yeah, but uh, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I really have hope that people will rally, r- rally together and just like put all that, you know, like the country needs to be in a better place. Yes. I think like right now, I think there's a lot of bickering. People are fighting like uh, in the Congress and stuff oh, like that. You yeah. know, like Our, it's, I, I think it's people ridiculous. are coming out of a little. I, I think we we underestimate the trauma of what COVID was and oh. what it did yeah. and all the things and no one's processed it yet. <laughs> and it just like created a <laughs> lot of yeah. anxiety and anger. And like, it's just, it just brought all this you stuff see it to in the people's surface. Behavior on a daily Sadness, basis. Yeah. yeah like, the isolation was a problem. And yeah. then the, Debating on the science People of it, and you guys had it bad. Conspiracy. You guys had right. it bad in and California. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and well, again, you know, and again. But, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in think, California, but we didn't feel like we were all like, for the most part, we were like, okay, this is bad. We'll follow well, all the yep. rules. Yeah. We yeah. Yeah. And then in it was, cities, but then there's cities. so yeah. much of California that is red. You forget, yeah. like yeah. I yeah, forget, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like you leave the, the. I live in Oakland, right? You leave mm-hmm. the Bay Area, you leave LA, you drive an hour. And people have very different viewpoints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard recently that there mm. was still some Ku Klux Klan actually oh, in the geez. north of California. I probably some, somewhere and whatever. But what what I mean is that I think everybody wanted to follow the rules and, and so far we did everything that we were told. Right. What I'm saying is that at some point people need to actually be honest and say that the Zoom with the kids and it's, it's horrible. Not, yeah. It was horrible. Teacher, like, see, horrible. And, and they need to do a study and see how we're gonna. Right. Because there's a lot of kids that went behind because of this, especially oh. in. Um, I think in, we're still in, feeling in, the effects of it today. To today. Yeah. In, 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 uh, in impoverished health. neighborhoods and stuff like that. Yeah. It was it was awful there's for them. So many I think there's, horrible things. You gotta go kids. by age group on it. Like the teenagers, really bad. Middle schoolers, really bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My 
six-year-old who was three at the time missed a year of preschool he was kind of living his best life like his yeah. mom and dad traveled we were always traveling like he got to be at home with us for a whole year yeah. and yeah. had no responsibility yeah. Kid, yeah. he'll probably remember it in a really positive of way course. is yeah. he a little delayed maybe in some things yes but mm -hmm. like he'll make up for it yeah yeah so i think some of the younger kids especially for people like us who had the ability to work from home yeah. and could do all yes. the things yeah. like yes. i that's my privilege speaking right like mm. for those kids it was okay some of, for the younger kids but as a whole, not great for children exactly. to not be interacting yeah, with yeah, people. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I think when you're in big cities like Los Angeles, where it's million, I mean, that school district is huge. We went to a private school. We go to a Catholic school, so mm -hmm. then we were following the archdiocese, so we went back a little sooner. But LAUSD, like, the fear is also just, like, how are we going to make this work? The yeah, classrooms are packed. Yeah. Same with New York. It was... Yeah. You know, if you put everyone back in a classroom, is everyone is it even worth it? Or is everyone going to get sick and two days later yeah. be gone? Us, I exactly. the, the they just know. Oh, oh, that's yeah, what before. we were doing here. And yeah. no one has a blueprint for it, which yeah. is why, like, the criticism I get, I think getting into year three, you were like, okay, let's just call it what it enough. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're on booster number 75. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm good. Like, at yeah. a certain point, you know. Yeah, but like, us, me and Miriam, we had no choice. Like, it was not even a question about uh, what was going to happen. Is like, we had, to, we had to get vaccinated to be able to yeah, actually I mean, for the business to just, travel. Just to travel. So just it was not travel. Travel yeah. into the US, right? No, yeah, yeah, if you were yeah, not yeah. vaccinated, right? So well, what about even... for Americans coming here though? Yeah, it was well, the I mean, same thing for for some time, but now it now it, they don't I do think this round, round one and two became like but after that nothing's I think round one and two I kinda got it, but okay, now yeah. I'm like if you were forcing me to do more, I really resist enough it. Enough. I just, yeah. I just don't. I think we're all. A yeah. lot of us feel the same way after the first two. Um, yeah. Obli that we had the, to, the, yeah. the message yeah. that we needed yeah. to have, but for a third one, right. like, it's not. But I think justified. that's why the world is grumpy. I think we're just processing all this. Like yeah. Hmm. Well, there was a lot of bullying. It felt like yeah. bullying in a sense. Yeah. Like, I understand you're doing it. So much division. I understand you're doing it to protect us. I yes. really do. But I, mm. sometimes, especially here in, in Canada, like, in, no, in Quebec specifically, I felt the way, like, our prime minister was, like, talking to us as if he was our daddy. Like, right. like specific. Oh, like, you yeah. guys in the U.S. was like. We, we had a nickname. Yeah. Right? We called him, you know, yeah. Papi Legault. Papi Legault. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like grandfather Legault. Yeah, yeah. It was a running gag because uh, he was really, so like, he was, and the people was like, oh, he's taking care of us. Some Justin right now? Is that who we're talking about? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. so, so, so. <laughs> Sorry, I want to get into him, though. I, I, I'm not going to lie. When oh I saw God. your reaction, I was sure you were thinking about him, but it's not him at all. Not Justin, you're not. Okay. It's crazy. Not at all. You're not going to have like to the protect same type of reaction. There you go. François Legault. Like reality That's TV, him. basically. That's our <laughs> prime minister. The, the oh. Oh. The so I'm confused. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that's the prime minister <laughs> of Quebec. That's the prime minister of Quebec. And you have good looking Justin, good looking Justin, which is. For Canada, right? Uh -huh. And they don't so, they don't see eye to eye. Oh no, they, they beef. Don't see. They beef because they Quebec is the Ooh, only yeah, Quebec more. is the only French speaking province right. in Canada. Does so, Trudeau speak French? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. He's from Quebec. He's from yeah, he's from Quebec. That's his Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah, so he's like, oh, you need to treat you need to treat uh, <laughs> you need to treat <laughs> treat us different. You know, so, so, and then he goes to meetings. They go to meetings, all the province together. You're like, no, we're from Quebec. We're different. And then they're like, treat uh, us different. There's, 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 <laughs> still, there's still that turmoil between. French speaking yes. and English speaking people. Like, yes. So the, tell people us. Don't I don't know the history. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> I know we can. Well, you're like you don't want to tell the history of like, everyone listening. It's like we know the history. So we'll no, that's fine, that's fine. But you, I was. You think they know? You think they know? I was fascinated by the English and the French here, so I, I found that really like fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. You can go. Well, you've been the, here before. No. Oh, it was your first time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I've been yeah, in Toronto and Winnipeg. What it was. Winnipeg. I've never been to no, Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> I went in the summer. I don't plan and had on ever going in to the, Winnipeg. No. Yeah, it was lovely. You, you can die in Winnipeg during the winter. In the winter, right? Yeah, it's not. It is cold. It's, it's it's cold. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's a, it's like a desert, you know. Yeah. But yeah. so where Mir where actually Miriam grew up in the West Island, it's called like there's like Kirkland um, and Dorval and all those places. Like there's mm -hmm. places and uh, like businesses that they don't even speak, speak French, like here. Like oh, really? 20 minutes away. Oh, really? Yeah, you go to McDonald's and it'd be like the drive thru like, hi, can I take your order? Huh. Hello. Hello. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that I noticed, oh, though. A lot of, like, um, a lot of people that I've spoken to when they switch from mm. French to English, their English accent is, like, perfect. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 100%. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Which is I mean, because here... So interesting. Like, when to be honest... When you go to school, what do your kids speak in school? My kids, it's French, but they have 
uh, they're obligated to take English classes. Yeah. Mm. But the school is all in French. All in French. And they they read in English. French and whatever. There are some schools that have like French. English immersion, though. There yeah. are some schools that you can um, have your child uh, more fo- focus on on uh, learning English. Everything, okay. all the the you know whether it's math or all the the like history. Yeah, yeah. 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 What is it called? Like, fr- is it English immersion? Or, uh, I forgot uh, what the uh, term. Yeah, I forgot the term too. But I'm just saying, like, because never forget. There's two official languages in the in the whole country. It's right. French and English. Right. So every prime minister needs to speak it's French. Mm. And do you speak French primarily at home then? Yeah, yes. yes. I mean, okay, again, depending on where you're from. Right. right? So so I think mm. the best way to see it is um, it's a mix. <laughs> I always tell this when when you look at this history of Canada, I made this joke for a long longest time is we were this we were this close of having HBO. Right, <laughs> because for the for the longest growing up, HBO that was, was that thing that, that was, you see yeah. at, in the states here from Canada. That was really like, oh, if you're from the states, you can have access to HBO. If you're from Canada, you don't have access to it. <laughs> and in the history, that was like the in thing. the history, there was a point. There was a uh, there was a point in time where you guys were about to take us over. And something happened. I forgot what it is, but like there was like a big fight. <laughs> oh, and, oh, oh, and I was big. English, I was a big part of that. Yes, yeah, but mostly the English they did win. Yes, exactly. but they allowed the defeated to still you know keep their language. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have that turmoil. Oh, but 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 it's 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 like back in the day. <laughs> I mean you know people. The conquerors allowed so a uh, little. It's just so funny to see people crazy. you know. Um, bicker about things that they don't even understand because they don't even know their own history, right? right. But they'll still bicker. And it's just a, a question of um, the French feeling that, the, you know, if you were a French-speaking person uh, versus an English-speaking person, uh, you were being mistreated. Like, mm. the English-speaking people were uh, mm. seen as, a, like, at a higher regard. Mm. Yep. And yep. then that's just passed on from generation yep. to generation. So does speaking English here feel, like, a little bit elitist then? Yes. Okay. Uh, to, to the French. Uh, yeah. So basically, give you an example. Fair. Everybody knows about McGill University, mm-hmm. right? When you, when you think about Montreal mm-hmm. and you think about the, the biggest university, university yeah. it's McGill. When people, like, because it has that status and, and yeah. whatnot. It's an English-speaking school uh. in in Montreal, in the middle of Montreal. So, so yep. I think I think the best uh, again, the best way to say it is like I keep on telling people I learned English. Yes, there was English Sesame classes. Sesame Street. Uh, uh, Sesame, no, I was gonna say no, I'm more. Speaking for me. Yes, <laughs> uh, for you, yeah. yeah. But you're a different generation than me. But but but, but <laughs> generation. Are you older? Just a few years. <laughs> he did mention he's known you since you were in diapers, which implied that he's like. Oh my god. He wasn't old. in diapers. Hey, he's like fifty six. That's that's not true. I'm forty three. <laughs> so you're both <laughs> younger than both of us. You're gonna offend me now. I'm forty three. I know, right? By the way, nineteen seventy nine. I will not give you my social security. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a little LS cream in here? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, the okay, mix we were supposed to do like 15, 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, golly. Alex, you're not drinking? Alex, would you like a drink? <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> we'll get a glass. What Alex. a question. I have, have a cup for you. Have, like, like this. There yeah. you go. Ooh. So I think, what did Fawn call this? Grandma's milk? Grandma's milk. More? Or is that okay? Um, I may need more in a minute. Okay, okay, just a second. All right, let Spread me just... Up. Yeah, yeah, go get a glass. Oh, yeah, I, Alex, I have a glass here. We have these there really go. classy here glasses here second. with ice in it that um, yeah. Stevens brought. Um, it's Le Tim Hortons, right? Yes, Tim Hortons, yes. <laughs> Our version of Starbucks, even though we got Starbucks here. But, uh, I love the Starbucks. It's Cafe Starbucks. Cafe. It's cute. Sure you guys cafe have Starbucks, Starbucks, right? You don't have Tim Hortons. No, do they? Yes, they do. Mm. Oh, it's just Canadian? Tim Hortons, very good. No oh, God, this is so good. <laughs> and also, it's okay He'll with He'll just like, say yes to everything. It's like, really? So no, good. Porto, I see. Mm, it smells good. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> There you go. So the problem is, it's like when I open okay, this at home, no, but this is I'll good, sit though. all night and just sip on this. It's my first time trying <laughs> this. It's so good. <laughs> Le, Le Uncle, Le Uncle it's my Nearest? first time trying it too. Oh, Uncle Nearest? No, it's my nice, first time. Right? Oh, I thought, really? I, meant, no, I thought you I meant, meant the mix. Just got in. I thought you meant the mix. No, no, no. I so I like, we wait just minute. arrived. <laughs> <laughs> it just got in. No, because I, I enjoy whiskey and scotch in general. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? It's great. It's very smooth. It I mean, is very smooth. Like, are you saying that even, because I don't that even, we're not the only process? process. <laughs> no, because he knows for a fact. Do you think we're the most awarded bourbon or American whiskey for the last four years? Definitely. Do you understand yeah. it now? <laughs> and the fastest growing American fastest whiskey growing. in history. <laughs> it's that Lincoln County process. Yeah. It smooths is. it out. So, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> I, I was going to ask, but now that we're doing that tangent, so. Um, a lot of tangents tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's delicious. It's so good. Uh-huh. Dessert. Oh. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Sorry, that 
took me aback. <laughs> All right. It's a good sign. So, yeah. How, how are you I'm guys? Have like an LS mustache. <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys processing the success that Uncle Nearest has? Like, mm-hmm. uh, is is it like surreal? Do you think like, or is it like, are you the, still the same mode that I am right now with LS, which is job still needs to get done? And, Absolutely. And yeah, that's what that, mm-hmm. that's that's the thing, right? Um, it's not even like like a hundred million. All right, it's yeah, that's. There's just so much more to be done. Yeah. 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 Um, but so I've been with the brand since day one. Right. Since before we had like our bottles and labels mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. And I remember the road just to to launch. And then I remember like the day of our launch, like our party, and it felt like a wedding. Mm-hmm. Like you were like, oh, the planning had come together. <laughs> and like the event's here. And like, you know, you don't get to talk to everyone. No yeah, need, yeah, you yeah. know, and you end up a little buzzed. And <laughs> then the next morning it was like, oh, like, this is really happening. happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, every phase has been kind of interesting. But, yeah, I mean, right now it's, like, it's, well, um, we have a, an amazing ambassador of ours, a guy that just loves us so much, Tex Rover, um, Georgia, shout out. And he <laughs> always says, all gas, no brakes. And that's kind of where we mm-hmm. are still. Um, yeah, but just a little less frantic because at the very beginning it was Fawn, myself, and Steven. Mm-hmm. And traversing the country and like figuring out distribution and as we grew and like added people and then in 2020 when we had a little like a pause where we were no one we were still working our butts off but we weren't out in the world and we figured out what we needed we brought Lucia on and we brought other team members Mm -hmm. on it feels like we're more like stable like we Mm -hmm. have like we have enough we have enough people we have enough resources and Mm -hmm. stuff to to really take it to the next level so we're just we're always pushing right Mm -hmm. right we're always pushing yeah i mean fawn will say we just hit 100 million like we're gonna hit another 100 million this year let's go yeah 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 yeah, yeah. let's just keep moving and and that's always been our inspiration i remember the day after that launch when someone's like oh my gosh that was so tiring i'm like well that was like (laughs) the sprint but now we're in the marathon right right right, (laughs) so you gotta change your breathing and figure out what you're gonna do and what's your strategy but here we go you know for sure for sure i mean from the outside looking in like like it's it's pretty amazing what you guys have been able to accomplish. Uh, I think it, what's funny is that it's it, like I said I was t- uh, telling you guys earlier. It's funny to see the people here's reaction to learning about Uncle Nearest mm. now. Yeah. Like it's so like it, it's it's so it, it's so fascinating to see how information travels mm. and yes. you see what pick, what what people pick pick up right. Mm-hmm. So there's smaller stories about Uncle Nearest that are gonna stay in the states, mm-hmm. but that hundred million one it yeah. crossed over yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. What, yeah. Res- what resonates right? So in yeah. the United States, like the story of an African American in the deeps, an enslaved African American in the deep South, and his relationship with a white man, and this that relationship was extraordinary. Mm-hmm. But Americans, it resonates very different than mm-hmm. maybe. It resonates elsewhere, right? right. And so our yeah. story yeah. has always been such a big deal, but we also have always done our uh, created whiskey with excellence as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but then all the all the PR, like we have PR for kind of for everybody. So I think mm-hmm. it just even in the UK, we realize like coming in and saying first known African American master distiller, people like tell me more, and it's really yeah. okay. He's a godfather of Tennessee whiskey. This is what he did, and I was like, oh, that we get. Okay. So you have to yeah. realize, and he is like without. Without nearest, there's no Tennessee whiskey. Right, right, right. He's the one right, t- okay. teaching the process. He's the one mentoring people how to make this whiskey, which is now the reason Tennessee whiskey is called Tennessee whiskey. So what's the relationship with Jack Daniels? Like, in the sense, like, I, I know the story. Like, okay, nearest green, Jack Daniels, really family relationship, whatever. Like, there was a closeness there. But what's, sure. like, but the, 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 is there a corporate link between the two entities? The only, so... Well, so if you don't know, so really quick, Uncle Nearest, enslaved man in the 1800s, was enslaved on a farm owned mm-hmm. by a preacher named Dan Call. A young, since you brought mm-hmm. about Jack Daniel, moved to that farm. He was about nine years old. He was the youngest of 10. His mother had died shortly after childbirth. And so he came and worked in the Dan Call farm as a chore boy and lived there and, you know, was making away for himself. Right. And he kept seeing this steam in the hollow, the smoke in the hollow from nearest making whiskey. So he, he got curious. He, he was um, very right. curious. Okay. Eventually, as he, you know, that was always grown folks business. As he got older, Dan introduced him to nearest and said, you know, this is the best whiskey maker I know of. Nearest, teach him everything you know. Wow. And thus the relationship began there. That's what I wanted to, so, to really clarify. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It was really a relationship mentor, mentee. You know, mm. people, if they're outside the United States or even in the U.S., you still don't get like 
Jack did not own Nearest. Mm-hmm. He was actually mm-hmm. much younger than him. Right. He was a young boy learning from him. Mm-hmm. Right. And then Jack was this amazing marketer that was going out and selling that whiskey. In fact, we have, you know, anecdotally, he was selling to um, soldiers during the Civil War. Jack right. was a really slight man, and so it was illegal to sell to the soldiers. Slight man, he just, like, figured people think he was a, a child. Like, mm-hmm. no one's going to shoot a kid, oh, you know? Wow. And then over the course of time, post-Civil War, he then took over that still. He took over the distillery from Dan Call. Hmm. And post-Civil War, he actually hired Nears to be his first master distiller, and he was paying him as he would have paid anyone else. That's okay. crazy. So 1884, which is here now in Montreal, is the year we believe Nearest retired. And so Ooh. Nearest retired, Jack moved to where he now is in Lynchburg, Tennessee, mm. and Nearest's sons also followed him. So that famous picture everyone sees of Jack Daniel with a black yep. man to mm-hmm. his right yep. is actually Nearest's son, George. It's not oh. Nearest. Okay, it's we have no okay. photos of Nearest at this okay. point. Wow, so, yeah. but we have Records. Quite a records. Story. We, yeah, records, but no photos. So and Nearest was also the only master distiller at the famous old number seven distillery. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. But you, you see, this is the thing. This is the, the, the things yeah, that are so... Compelling stories. Yeah, 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 for sure. But that's what gravitated, made people gravitate with that because yeah. that's so... You never hear something like that. You never heard right. about something like and that. The story, you know? And people in Lynchburg, Tennessee, like this tiny little town in the south, like we, Victoria Butler, who's our uh, master blender, like she grew up and it was like white people and black people there all hung out. They were friends. They mm-hmm. played together. Mm-hmm. All the things... Not something you, that you would traditionally see in the Deep South. And everyone knew the story of, of Nearest and they knew the story of Jack. Yeah, yeah. It just never really... It wasn't like, really put to Traveled, light. right. And so light, when yeah. Fawn came to town, everyone was a little skeptical. Like, well, what are you here to tell? And she, Fawn knew, in her heart of hearts, she knew that their story was one of honor and love. And mm-hmm. she committed to everyone there that if it's not, I'm not going to tell the story. Like, yeah, I know what yeah, I, 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 you know, and... And I think that that was a lot of hope that was brought to the United States. I mean, that was when we launched in 2017. We were in a lot of turmoil in the United States. And yeah. I felt like that was such a great story of love and light. Okay. And um, But if you think about just what Tennessee whiskey is, that process that Nearest was using, what he taught Jack, was filtering through charcoal. Okay. And that process can be tra- tracked all the way down back to West West Africa. Wow. He was not the only one. He was not the only, only person doing that. Though, oh. you know? But he taught it to Jack. And then Jack's whiskey became, you know, it's a great American brand. And, you know, however many years ago, they lobbied for Tennessee whiskey, like for Tennessee whiskey to be Tennessee whiskey has to be made in Tennessee. Right. And it has to go through that process, the process that Nearest had taught Jack. Wow. There's one distillery Mm -hmm. in Tennessee that has an exemption because they've been there for so long. Wow. Um, They don't use that process. But otherwise, if you come and you want to say you're Tennessee whiskey, that's the process you're using. So that's Godfather status. <laughs> full disclosure, I've been to the distillery last. Was it two years ago? You were there for for our June. No, the, the, no, for the inauguration. Um, um, I was there. The reopening. June, was that in two thousand? But it, it was tw- twenty one. Yeah, yes. Juneteenth. We opened. We yeah, reopened we, Juneteenth. We reopened 20, yeah, Juneteenth. That's it. Yeah. Almost two years ago. Now. Yeah, that's crazy. Cr- I know. Time flies. It's not getting any younger. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the um, it was it was surreal. To be on that land, to see everything that was accomplished, to see all of that, it was like really, it was really surreal. That mm. people don't even know that this distillery is hosting people every day, basically. Yeah, we're every open week. Thursdays through Sundays for tours, and then we're open on Mondays now for retail as and well. And there's always people, people there. Always people. Always. Mm. And it's we're about to open like tours. the world's longest bar and all the things. It's really? just gonna get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Fun is a bit of a show off, right? <laughs> She is subtle. Let me tell you. I feel me and Fawn are like the same. Like in a sense, like I would do the same thing. The the world's longest bar. And like yeah. But she's humble as all. So okay, yes. so funny today. So I got a text from her today. So yesterday she posted like on Instagram, like, I love working here, like showing this distillery, yeah. the distillery she <laughs> built. Yeah, yeah. And someone wrote her was like, if that was me, I'd be playing like, who runs this world? Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beyonce or somebody. <laughs> but full time, like, I love working here. And I'm like, you did that shit. Like, yeah, that's yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she's proud she's of it. always very humble. She's humble. She's humble, for real. Like, for real. But yeah. she doesn't like to do anything small. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to yeah. do this. No. And then, we you know, this open like a tasting room and check the box. It's like, no, we'll go ahead and be at the top distillery in the world. Number Thank one. You. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it do was it so with funny. excellence or don't do it at all. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, 100%. yeah, if Fawn listens to this, I'm, uh, my goal is to bring her 
to Montreal. I know she she probably already wanted to come. I spoke to her at Kenny's birthday last oh, year. Nice. And I know her and Keith want to come to Montreal, but I, I would like to structure something and where, you know, people could actually hear her listen yeah. about her story and, and, and stuff right. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm we'll gonna book her be... for 2027. Her <laughs> schedule's really busy. <laughs> She'll make some place for me. Yeah, I'm let's put so something cool. on the calendar I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to talk to her team. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. But, yeah, so, but anyways, uh, you guys, it's amazing work. And uh, mm -hmm. um, Thank you. so now you guys are here and... Um, we're, we have an event tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys, how did the U.S. Embassy get involved? They, just, they literally just emailed us. That's crazy. Hmm. And they knew about us. It's black. So here it's Black Heritage Month. Yeah. yeah black yeah, History yeah. Month yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, we want to talk. We want to um, like talk about more black owned brands. And okay. so like, here we are. Yeah. Oh, so they reached out to you. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so I'm they're hosting this big tasting dinner tomorrow. And then we're going to the Consulate General's house. Um, Residence. Residence on Friday and right. talking to some local entrepreneurs. Right, and right, it's right. It's really like it's like an honor. It's so fun. Like so, we're just so happy to be here. For so them. just so you know, so like for the longest, um, LS Cream was the only black owned product on the shelf of the SEQ here. Oh my god. Wow. So, so are when, there two of us now? Is that it? So so let me so I'm gonna explain to you like okay. the the bigger brands that I know, right? Of course you have then I mean there's a maybe like a sidebar, but Ciroc. Mm. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's a complicated structure mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. that, but we all know the story. Uh, Doucet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ace of Spades. Um, uh, Bamako Rum. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. right? From Haiti, right? Okay. And, and to me, like I said, I think Bamako is like, it's not that it doesn't count. That's not what I'm going to say. It's just... Bamako is it's an, not, institu it's it's, it's, it's it's an, an institution. It's an institution. It is. Yeah, it's like, sure. I don't care about the numbers. Right. Like, they could sell a one case a year or right. 10,000 or a million cases a year. Every bartender knows what bar. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right. So, but LS Cream for the longest, because we got on, on the shelf of the SAQ on October uh, 2015. Mm. At that point, we've wow. been at it for that yeah. long. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, so finding our foot, because, and again, as you guys no are small feet, by the way, no small feet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. As you guys are discovering it right now with Uncle Neris, yeah, the SEQ they're not really <laughs> easy to bargain with, and they have a price structure that is a bit special, mm. right? <laughs> so let's just say that it took us five years to figure that out. Yeah, I'll just keep it at that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll leave the rest for my book, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 basically yeah so I for, we make the book yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but basically yeah when, when we launched at the SAQ we were from from here for, first of all from Canada right you'd think like, you would have gotten a lot more I get an American company trying to come in you think but, but locally it's so, but it's so difficult yeah so in the yeah. control states in the states I definitely think there's because so you guys like the provinces here rule like kind of a control yeah, states in the yeah. states. I feel like there is some preferential towards local mm -hmm. yes. brands in yes. other places. Yes, yeah. there is a preference. Yes. You would imagine. Recently, that became a big thing. But okay. I, I think, I think yeah. the, the, the message I'm trying to convey here is that at the end of the day, this, is, this industry as a whole is really complex. Yes, yeah. it is. And when you put in like a monopoly in the middle of that afterwards, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes practically impossible. The, yeah. the reason we got in... It's like, basically, we reached out to them when we were building LS, mm. and we were like, hey, listen, we have this project. We were like, we're from Montreal. You guys are government-owned. We, we pay taxes. This is basically our business. It's it's local, it's put us on. Yeah. They basically la la laughed at us, and they hung up, you know? Yeah. And then there was an article that yeah, came in in the, in the newspapers, like uh, online or whatever, like the, the big newspaper here that's called La Presse, mm. and basically it highlighted LS Cream. And they started to get a flood of emails. Uh, okay. And they that's reached out to us. Like, yeah, and right. they reached out to us. And that's how we got in. Normally, to get in, you have to like do a, 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 a Tinder calls, whatever, like a call to Tinder, whatever. That's what like, we went through. Yeah. And yeah. we have a broker that's been working with us for almost three years. So this was very recent that we were able to get in. And then we had mm. to redo our labels and stuff. So yeah. that mm. was just not under, like outside of Canada, not understanding all that was challenging. So yeah. Really excited to meet everyone and like understand it a little bit more. Yeah. I've not been here. We've gone through it all kind of outside yeah. of Montreal. Well, I mean, the, the good thing is that you can feel, you can feel happy to know that 
everybody goes through that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. Even the people from here, you know, they yeah. go yeah. through that, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's just a grueling process. But I all of this to say, because we're talking about the Black History Month and the embassy and whatever, I'm actually working with the SEQ right now to try and make them acknowledge Black History Month. Because oh, wow. the SEQ as a whole, you know, the SEQ, it's 400 stores across the province. Mm, yeah. wow. It's $2 billion in revenue. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. Does and all everything get here beer, wine, and liquor in the SAQ? It's yeah, it's I'm gonna uh, say it's not more beer, wine. wine. Yeah, it's gonna be more wine and, and li- liquor spirits. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Beer, beer they no can, beer. they have well, a little I mean, spe- specialized but because remember prestige was still there for a while, right? Well, you I know? mean the, 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 the core of what they sell. Yes. Yeah. The core of what they sell is wine and spirits. That's mm-hmm. the core. Okay. Beer is still fine in um, like grocery? uh gr- yeah. groceries yeah. or um you know the, the our inconvenient of uh, bodega, stores. Uh, com- yeah, whatever. Yeah. But uh, but again, my point is okay, so real quick story so you understand exactly what I'm talking about is so we got LS into the into the, the, the branches of the SAQ. So we're doing what we're supposed to do. We're going to the stores. And at one point, what happened is um, there was a, this was a January 2020. So two months yeah, before the yeah, pandemic, yeah. okay? Yeah. So I'm actually going to meet Gabby for the podcast. And I wanted to get a bottle of wine. And, oh, um, yeah. and I go to a specific SAQ which is in the middle of Montreal. Okay. Middle of Montreal, like, you know, urban, you know, whatever. Right? Yeah. And I go there, and I realize that ever since we got on the shelf, that specific store never carried LS. Wow. Hmm. So while I'm browsing, I'm, sa- I'm like, I'm, hmm. I'm, I'm going to ask an employee, right? Yeah. I didn't introduce myself as the owner of LS, and I'm like, um, hey, do you, like, you why don't you story. carry LS cream? He's like, yeah, in French. He's like, yeah, <sighs> you know, I'm I'm me, right? You know, okay. Not for yeah. our demo. It's a little bit too black. What? Oh my god! I'm here. He I'm, said that yes. out loud. Yes. The black man. So the thing Damn. is, is that you know, earlier we we're talking about the dynamics between the Was U.S. The white and what? Thing? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. Let me speak to you something. Growing up, it was easy to hear. A white person say to you, white people play hockey, black people play basketball. basketball. So when that specific guy told me that. That's where it's coming from. That's, my, that's what I grew up on. I mm. understand what he means in the sense that it's not right what he's saying. Mm. But I'm not surprised of his uh, subliminal racism. Even, and, even though well, it I mean, seems. His, his candor. Yes. His candor, Just like. to be so okay with that. Yeah. 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 But yeah. why? A little bit too black. What about Bailey's? No, the reason why they were like, saying no because it's it was a creamy beverage. It's like what is it? It's the owners are too black uh, because what I've been the messaging, the complaint it. that we've been having, even from our peers. Because of course, when you come here, there's like like I said, Montreal is a little village, right? So here we have our success stories. We have uh, you know uh, other brands that do vodka, gin, and whatever that are success stories that are mm-hmm. branching out, right? Yeah. You know, even one guy is branching out to the states now. You know, like and, and and but he made a success here, right? Um, so even this guy, he told me once, is like, I think in your marketing you should stop putting your wife in your marketing. Like, I think it should be a blonde with blue eyes that you should put nope. to promote LS. You know, and I'm always like, no, Damn. our brand is authentic, and Miriam's hot too. So, <laughs> so what? and 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 he, and he was like being honest. He was like, this is what I think. He said the people here are not gonna resonate with your mm-hmm. with your wife, and and if you keep on putting like uh, you know uh, Afrobeat music and stuff like that, and uh, or uh, Asian mm-hmm. uh, music, you urban, know, whatever, urban. Whatever, and I'm like, no, this is about our brand. This is the culture. This is what we represent. We actually want to make people learn yeah. about, you know, right? You know, it's from, yeah. so it's a cultural beverage. So it's yeah. Not, yeah, so so just uh, uh, just to come back to the, to that guy, I was a bit shocked that he said it like that to me. But again, coming back to growing up here, I, I was not surprised. He, he's basically saying, yeah, like That's you guys idea. are basically have a ghetto product. You know, like that that's what he's saying to me. And we don't consider this as a product that we want to carry here. Right? It surprises me though, because we just talked about demographics here. Yes. With black 
black That's people. That's my point. By That's the way, where being from the United States is uncomfortable. Always say black people. Very, We're very see, African, so but, but, see. but to say that twenty almost twenty five percent of Montreal is yep. black, like yep. that would surprise yep. me. That when that you think would about roll all the, the of course, yeah. when you're talking about the Africans, Caribbean, and whatever, and so yeah. forth, yeah, a, th- a thousand percent. So my point is exactly that. I'm saying yeah. this, and I know exactly where we are. Actually, the, sto- the that specific SAQ branch mm-hmm. is like two streets from the, where uh, I went to high school, mm. right? So, so I know exactly the demographics, right? right? So I'm like, what you're saying doesn't make any sense, right? Okay. And I actually want to talk to your manager. And it's racist. And, right. It's, right. Uh, and this is delicious. I was, over, I, was over, I was over the racist part. Yeah. The racist part was done for me. I like the Karen of racism. And it's racist. And it's racist. <laughs> so basically, no, I okay. went to talk to, he called his manager. Manager came in. I actually introduced myself as the owner of the screen that, that time. And he basically said the same thing verbatim. Thing. Yeah, no problem. And I was like, I was like, you, 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 that doesn't make any sense. So oh, fast yeah. forward. So many mi- things. I we're in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> we're in the middle of the pandemic, and I blow a fuse, right? Miriam saw it. I blow a fuse. I was pissed off at them because there was a lot of s- different stores that were doing like a lot of that type of stuff. It, of, yeah. it, sometimes they would get, the, get in the product. They would not put it on the shelf. Yeah, they would put it in the back. People have to ask for it. Mm. People have to ask for it. I was like, who, who does that, right? So, so, I, you, and so basically, long story short, I made a whole, a whole PDF documentation. I outlined all the problems that I had with specific situations or whatever. Yeah. And, and what happened after, the, uh, after that, that, that store I was talking about earlier, I got one of my uh, white friends mm. to hassle the, the branch to get it in. Yeah. It was in July. They got LS in, it sold out in a week. I bet, because it's delicious. It's so good. So my point is, and our marketing here is really on point. Here, people know about LS, yeah. right? You know, like people go into the stores, they know about LS. So I was not surprised that it sold out, but I used this as ammunition in my documentation that mm-hmm. I sent to the SAQ to show them that there's a problem with the way that their employees are seeing brands. Yeah, it doesn't matter that... I'm the owner of LS and that I use black people in my marketing or I use hip hop music or Afrobeat or, or compa, uh, uh, you know, whatever. Like, sure. it, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, the brand deserves to have its place on the shelf yeah. and you need to treat it as such, yes. you know? And basically, all of this to say that I'm actually talking with the ACQ now to see what they're going to do about Black Israel Month because they're not recognizing it no, right now, nothing. you know? Nothing. So, so they're, they're none, none, even the Montreal Canadiens this year, did a, uh, they had a game at, at home, and it, they were wearing jerseys that were uh, to honor Black History Month How in long, hockey. Wow. How long has that wow. been discussed here, Black History or Black Heritage? It's been a while. It's yeah. been a while. It's but it's been, been aware I'm of it. I'm just curious, like, what the, like... It's been a while, but it's just, just been so low-key, right? Been ignored, yeah. like, it's just it's, been ignored, to be honest. It's, 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 it's all over the place. It's not structured, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like... Black History Month in the States is structured. It's a much like, bigger deal. Yeah. It's, it's like here, it's more like activists that were able to get a little bit of money from mm. some corporations and from the government, whatever, and they do their, their little things and whatever, whatnot. But yeah. again, the SCQ is a government-run operation. Right. Mm-hmm. We yeah. pay taxes. We yeah, should be acknowledged. Of course. You should. Like, and a bunch of their employees are black, too. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's interesting to me. I, I, I think, you know, as the um, non-melanin person, <laughs> <in the> room, <laughs> I think I, I was curious about what the makeup was of the SAQ because I think it's not an excuse. It's more of like, do they feel like they have a way to do it? But they do. They have empo- they have people to lean oh, on. Oh, of course. Right. I'm not making excuses. It's more of like, yeah, is it just good. a bunch of white? Because, you know, I always tell people, yeah. I'm like, launching this business with Fawn and walking into rooms everywhere, state, states, yep. whatever. I was just, I was like, everyone looked like my husband. Yeah. They were like in middle-aged white men with like white shirts with blue stripes on it. Yep. So I was curious, like what is the makeup? Because I think sometimes people just don't know what to so do. So here, so here. It's more diverse here though, so it sounds like. So me, it's like. I love educating my American counterparts on what's happening here because we're like, we're basically 20 years behind here, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So, so basically, I think that's the takeaway. Yeah. Then. Right. Yeah. So the information comes here, right? So we consume everything that American consumes, right? Mm-hmm. So we consume the same TV shows, the same news, the same whatever. Like we have a like when we watch the 10 o'clock news, 
there's 10 minutes on local and 10 minutes on international, which comprise mostly about the U.S. Mm. Right, our right? Neighbors, Like uh, yeah. Joe Biden doing the State of the Union, mm -hmm. while the State of the Union is on TV, and we're watching it, yeah. 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 right, yeah. you know, yeah. right? So, so th that's just the, 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 the gist of it. But uh, in, into corporate, when you go into all those buildings downtown, it's all white middle aged men. Yeah. It's, it's, it, there's no black executives, like, again, there's some, but I'm just saying, like, 99% of the make of it, Easy. it's, it's, it's all white. So the SEQ yeah. is no different from that, right? But I'm hopeful that they're going to listen to what, what I did because the pandemic was a bit of a deterrent in that sense. Cause sure. I, but I know that they saw what I'm saying. I have a good rapport with them. And I know their, their, heart is at the, their heart is in a good place. But at the end of the day, actions have to be made, you know, because I, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense for a government-led program to, to, right. to not acknowledge Black Black History Month. I, th I think Absolutely. it looks bad. You know, I'm curious. I'll, I, it's kind of something to dive into because, again, getting back to, I think in the U.S. it's 17. We have 17 states that are yep. control. I'm yep. interested to look back and see what every control state is like. The, what the governments are doing versus like chains and things like that. Virginia, even, I learned. They will. Virginia does a lot. Yep, I learned that they do. A, they do a lot. Yeah. Have yep. they always done a lot, or has it just been the last few? I think it's the last few years. I don't the feel DMV, like which is a very like predominant. It is, but I honestly like, don't feel like Black after. History Month has been incredibly highly represented in a lot of America until right. the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. George Floyd helped. Yeah. That, that yeah. Ended, yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. 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 And yeah. but I will say so. Again, I, so my kids go to a Catholic school in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. So I had I was a little taken aback. A few weeks ago, my six year old came home and they were learning about learning about Jackie Robinson, and so mm. they give him like coloring books. And I'm just saying this, like, please don't shoot the messenger because mm -hmm. I actually yeah yeah you're just they're learning about famous mm -hmm. Black Americans. And then they were coloring these guys, and so like he's all colored, and the whole thing is brown. Like mm -hmm. no, right. and I was like. It felt, as a white woman, I was like, is that right? Like, you not felt just, away. You felt it away. felt away because yeah. I'm like, are we doing it right? Right, right. You know, in yeah. like, I just feel like, I feel like, you know, people don't, it's not an excuse. It's like, how do we get people past the point to push past being uncomfortable yeah. and just getting into it? Yeah. And so what I've noticed in my son's classroom is I counted, I was there the other day. He's got about 20% of his classroom that's up, that's people of color, right. which is actually in, you know, in our little part of like pocket of West LA, it's pretty big. So I think we're getting there, but I think people are just so uncomfortable with doing the right thing yeah. now. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and so even that I was like, well, I don't know if I would have done it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that that's but he knew all the he knew all the stats. Like yeah. this is where he was born. He yeah. was the first black person to do this. To do this. so he knew all the things. I'm mm -hmm. like, so do we have to color a picture though? Like why can't we just talk about the person? Like the way he did it felt. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, get, I, I totally I understand. And I think that's the SAQ. Like, so how do we go about it? How, do we have enough black brand, black owned brands to represent it? Do we mm -hmm. know who's going to be the face of this campaign? Yeah. It's like, we need, P yes, Charles. So Stevens will be doing it. <laughs> Stevens um, will be doing it. Dear sirs. Who are we kidding? <laughs> who are we kidding? It's going to be Miriam again. Oh Miriam. <laughs> I think that we just need people. We need allies. Like, I mean, it's so, fun. someone, what, they were asking me the other day, they're like, as a white woman, is it so interesting to work for and work work alongside so many powerful like black women and I'm like mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing and they're like but I feel like you uplift them and I'm like I do I'm in that opportunity mm -hmm. we need more of that opportunity yeah. we need more white women to work with more black women to be able to uplift them and to speak about them and the same thing it's like if the SAQ doesn't have people of color in leader visible mm -hmm. leadership positions they don't know what the heck to do of course. and that's yeah. part of like our advancement initiative with Jack Daniels as well as well as bringing people in and fast tracking them so we get people of color in leadership positions so people see what it means yep to be in a leadership position and we can get more we can get more people of color because yep. I mean, this, if, otherwise you just got to Again, got a bunch of and white again, dudes yeah. in a room looking at you like, yeah. Yeah. how yeah. the yeah. hell yeah. do we do yeah. this? And, and it's not an excuse, but it's like they need to hire more people to figure that out, and you know. And True. And I, also, I mean, I, I have so many things to say. Um, I think that one of the problems, especially in the United States, is that we have over the last few years and probably before that developed a culture that it's so toxic to mm -hmm. have a conversation mm -hmm. and you can't progress if you can't talk to somebody 100%. who doesn't agree with you yep. not willing you know to listen. like if you're not willing to listen if you're not willing to be wrong and i i i get that people are very sensitive mm -hmm. 
right now about what they say because they're scared they're going to be wrong. And I think that we all have to have a certain amount of grace. Um, it doesn't cancel, mean that you should have with, culture. That's why everything I've said today, I'm like, is, but I'd like to say with like a grain of salt because people will take any word that someone says and they run with true, it. True. And no one will no ever one learn <laughs> if they can't ask an honest question. It might mm-hmm. be ignorant. Um, and I don't expect for, for all of us to do the work for someone yeah, else, yeah, 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 but yeah. to be able to have a conversation without just being completely cut out, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like that does not create change. That doesn't do anything positive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think especially in the U S that's something that I've seen so much of. Um, and I would also say, you know, this conversation came up. I was, I was teaching a class in New York a few weeks ago, a, w- a month or so ago. Right. Um, and it was, we were on a diversity panel okay. and the conversation about there being so many white men in the room came mm-hmm. up and a colleague of mine, Dwayne Silvestre said something, um, about like white men don't check out of this conversation. And I mm-hmm. went back and reiterated that. Mm-hmm. And my point and his point was that white men, white people have access to be in spaces and to say things and be heard in a way that women and people of color don't. So you can sit there and smile and say, oh yeah, I support you. But if you don't speak up and you don't make yourself a a true ally, but Mm -hmm putting yourself into an uncomfortable conversation, yeah. you're not really doing it. Well, that's just it. Like accepting casual racism and casual racist remarks that people, you know, the very casual stuff that happens in a fraternity or on right. in a locker room or whatever it is. Like you have we need to those, say something we need white guys. Like we need those white guys. You do. To say, like, yeah, hey, I mean, actually, that's not funny. It's not yeah. funny. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I have two children. Not my, funny. my kids, I am very, very fair. Mm-hmm. I acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. Um, my kids look white, 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 right, white. Right, right. And we have so many conversations about the responsibility that comes with their privilege. Right. Because my, I'm like, you are white and black mm-hmm. and their dad's family is Mexican. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you look white and you mm-hmm. will live your life mm-hmm. as a white person. Right. You reality, choose yeah. that. And also all of that ancestry is still within you. Yeah. No Counting matter, on you to speak up. And you too. can yeah. get into these spaces and be heard by people who would never listen mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. your grandfather mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. your great great grandfather and you have to say something. So mm-hmm. it's it's crazy and it's you know, hard to it's, teach it's, though. It's, it's something it is, that I already said on the it's podcast. So it's a necessity. It, I already said it in the podcast, but my first like I've I've dealt with this like all my life, like casual racism joke, whatever, okay. But it seems so far away. But um my son, Preston, um, four years old, pick him up from daycare, and he's st- he's he's like I seem like more quiet. He's always mm, joyful. And yeah. he was more quiet. Mm. It's a family daycare, so it's like they're like eight. Yeah. Top, right. whatever. So uh so he's like bit more quiet than usual and I'm like Preston what's going on he's like oh uh, you know today was not a good day I'm like what happened he's like yeah well uh, this kid told me that I couldn't play with the other so, so, he was trying to play with the other girl and this kid came in the middle he said no you can't play with her because you're black mm-hmm because of your skin color. He didn't yeah. say black, but he said right. he's, he made a reference to his skin color. And at four years old, yeah. I I never thought that I would How have... How shocked were you by that? I was shocked. Or not? I don't even when remember. When you told me the story, shocked. I wasn't shocked. I don't because remember if I was shocked. I was, I was disappointed, but I, I, but I don't think Children I was shocked. Children are a reflection of what they learn at home, yeah. too, at that age. It yeah. is. Just I mean, brain. that's not that child. That's what's really sad. No, it's not, also, coming, it's not right? coming from it's the like child. It's like someone taught you exactly. that. That's yeah. what you're hearing but, but, at home. But can I say something about that? God, this that is, sucks. This, it's funny. <clears throat> um, I've came in a full circle about this, like a 180 about what you just said. One of a project that I did, because here we don't have... Seniors, we have a thing called CJEP, which is like oh, okay. we, we we finish at great like high um, school, high school, but it's like school five years, yeah, five years, and then yeah. we go to college, yeah, exactly. But our college, you guys' college, is also university, right? Yeah. Right, and yeah. then we have we go to grade twelve, and then we go to four year university, exactly, and we have an in between. between no, we that. have our college right. is an in between college oh. and university are right. two different things. Oh, yeah, that's exactly. Right, our kids need that probably. So anyways, in that specific. 
moment, there was a, there was a, a, a like a what's it called semester project. <laughs> yeah. And the semester project was uh, it was like a I, f- I forgot. Uh, it's like human science. Is that what it's called? Like yeah, in humanities. English? Humanities, whatever, humanities. whatever. Like, and it was like, oh, find a subject. And one of my good friends at the time was Italian. Mm. And uh, and um, we always seen eye to eye, but we were always play joking like about the race thing or whatever. Like we were yeah. good friends, but we were always making jokes. And we said, what about we showcase if racism is taught at early age? Mm. Or, like just delve into that, right? Yeah. So he, we went to his high school, uh, which was more privileged mm. in a more suburban situation. And uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, pre, um, was it prim- uh, elementary school. Sorry, okay. that was more like you know privileged and whatever. And my in, in an elementary school that was more in a urban area, more public and whatever. Right. So we went to both schools. Uh, we talked to the sixth graders. Uh, sixth graders, can you believe that in both schools we had the same answers? Hmm. which was similar to what I said at the beginning. If you're black, you play basketball. If you're white, you play hockey. And well, imagine those 11-year-olds. Yeah, pervades Those, all, those, those all 11-year-olds, yeah. guys and girls, looking at me and Giuliano in front of the class, fascinated. Yeah, they were the two dynamics fascinated together. Yeah. By our dynamic. Mm. Yeah. Fascinating. Coming after we finished talking, wow. coming up to us and like, you guys are really friends? Yeah. Hmm. They're like, yeah. So how many years ago is this? No. It was it was in two thousand two, mm-hmm. in two thousand two, right? So, but again, not for you to do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, to honestly, see, yeah. to see because yeah. I think, but that'd I think be really interesting. I think what would only change would be like the 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 context of what people would say. It would be different now because hip hop music is everywhere yeah, and this right. and that. But in the back of their mind, right. still they still see yeah. different stuff. It's, it's, it's just conscious bias. But that's, but that's what, I mean, we had a really fantastic training on this. Yeah. Um, and, Dr. And, Jeffries was mm-hmm. this one, yeah. Hakeem Jeffries. Shout out, um, Dr. Hakeem Shout Hakeem out, Jeffries. the Ohio State University. The Ohio State University. <laughs> um, but but what, he, what he talked about, we've had a couple trainings, actually. Um, and the fact is that, you know, when we talk about systemic racism, <laughs> Even that doesn't necessarily see color. When you see them, let's not get too into horrible places, but like when you see things like the black police officers mm-hmm. that beat and killed a black yeah. man, mm-hmm. some of these biases are, are an ingrained part of our mm-hmm. culture. Um, regardless of what color you are. You right. see things on TV, you hear things on yep. the news, you you know, and that gets in no mm. matter yeah. what and you see I in think, your day-to-day life. And this is, we're going to probably end the podcast on this. <laughs> it's not a good note, but what you're saying is, to me, is something not, that I felt. It's not a black and white thing. Yeah, yeah. I felt some uh, something like that when I was in high school, which was, um, I, had a, uh, I had a teacher, it was, uh, I forgot how you say this in English, it's like, um, Dramatic, which is like arts and like you know we were we were like I don't even know how to say like anything. it was like a acting class like okay. it was more like a express yourself class whatever oh, like um, um, I know what you're talking about actually because my daughter just did it too oh, like, really? like right it's like, but but it's like like you 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 recreate to... uh, theater scenes mm, and you know like yeah. and whatever and stuff it was just like art you know whatever yeah. anyways and the teacher was black. Mm-hmm. And he was speaking on. I was the only black kid in my mm. in, in my group. Mm. Um, I went to a private high school, and um, yeah, and he was speaking on me specifically, and I felt it. I felt that there was a racism because I was black. He wanted to show oh, the was other. He, he was speaking to you. Yeah, speaking? yeah, yeah. He was showing the other white kids that he was not making me a priority, mm. right? He was showing the other white kids. It's like a it, weird, like, I'm yeah. not, it's like, of, you know, with like nepotism. I'm not yeah. favoring you. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. favoring you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not favoring you because you're black. I'm black, you're black, I'm not going to yeah, give yeah, that to you. Yeah, exactly. So and he was but, more, more but, concerned about how but he perceived he was versus more, teaching you. Yeah. And again. Yeah, like, why was that even in part of the it's equation? It's crazy. And again, there is. improv class? That's the word I've been looking for. Yeah, it's like sort of improv. Yeah, exactly, right? You know? It's really good for kids to learn. But it was. It's funny yeah. because he, you could see even at that time that he was more of a, um, like, and again, like, I don't want to go into too much, like, yeah. <laughs> uproar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are some black men 
that seem to have a preference t- towards white women mm. than either going to black men. And mind you, I have a lot of black friends that are white, white, white women. It's are all good. Women. The problem is, is that some of them, they seem like they dis- they, they're disgusted by black of women. going with black women. I, mm. I've been in a situation when I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to recount that yeah. right now. I spoke about it before, but I've I heard so stuff. I heard stuff from black men, like I, there's somebody I don't speak no more because of what he said about yeah, that. There's a and, lot of, and, and and again, I, there's a lot of different angles of to hurt. this. There's a lot of things that but need healing. Can we agree Absolutely. that mm. your son should never come home either crying or no. being sad because a four no. year old told him no. that no. whatever? But my thinking is that. You know when they did on CNN that thing, there were the four dolls, one was black, one was lighter and whatever, and it was like, which, which one is the black, is the mm. bad Prius, doll? The no, no, the, right. bad doll. the bad doll. Oh, yeah. black Dark, doll. Yeah. But you know, and, and, and the pirates did not They're, teach that. No. It's like, it's it crazy. Is. It's, I, you know, like, I, why, why, yeah, like that's weird sociology experiment that needs yeah. to be dug into yeah. anymore. And it's not even just... Color. I I had this conversation with my partner the other day because he was asking me, we were having this conversation about my son and, you know, I was saying it's so interesting because he has this clear path. Like he can just be white. And he was like, you never felt like you could just be white. And I said, I know that like for a lot of the world, It probably seems like I could, but one of my earliest memories is being a young child and having my friends run away from me because my hair was frizzy and my nose was flat. There you go. Regardless of the color of my skin. There you go. You don't look... Because I wasn't... I didn't look like them. They knew I was not... I was other. My cousin is... Um, is the shade of Alex. Mm -hmm. Her husband is white from Quebec, whatever, Mm -hmm. white man. Their their daughter came in, came out as like you, fair yeah. skin, whatever. Yeah. But her hair is different, and Super she had, and yeah. she had her, her experience with it recently, where you know, oh, your hair is different, therefore we're not playing with you, blah blah yeah. blah, making fun of her, and what, and, and now, oh, I want my hair to be this, I want this, I want yeah. that, and whatever. Oh, I straightened it's, my hair for years. Yes, mm. yes, it's 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 stuff that Identity we have prices. to deal with, yeah. and it, it, it's it's and it's crazy when I see Miriam talking to our daughter. And the, the books that she needs to buy and yes. whatever. Like, she did such a great job with that. Like, she made it a point. Yeah. Like, she knew it was coming. So, <laughs> it was like like loading a gun. Like, in a sense, yeah, like, okay. so important. Ch- 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 yeah. You know, like, okay, we have to do this. We have to do that. Cause, yes. Because we have to. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's like it's, it's, it's yeah. hard enough to, to, to raise a young woman mm-hmm. in this world. Right. Like and then to girls, put that on yeah. and to be a young black woman. Mm-hmm. That's just... Yeah. I will say I'm I want to make sure like everything I, I have hope with our future and the young people that yes. I am meeting every single day. I do too. Um like I really do think that our world can change and I think hey, that this little it's getting our little hemisphere can change with the young people. It takes people like us having these conversations with other adults and then bringing those home. You know, um we had a school where there was a lot of rules about hair. Catholic school, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of rules about hair. Mm-hmm. And even boys wearing long hair was not okay and mm-hmm. all the things. And we had a young woman at our school that was wearing braids. She's African-American. And there, my daughter and her friends went to the principal at one point and said, like, we think the rules about hair here are strict. biased or strict. And they're keeping people from, like, being able to talk about their natural hair, their heritage wow. and where they're yeah. from. And so, you know, they even went and talked to them about, like, feminine products like things like I'm saying like people even at 11 and 12 went to a principal to have these deep conversations not afraid of authority but wanting to speak up about what's right for yeah, women yeah, yeah. and for their friends and so I, I hear more and more of that I, I think too. as long as we're having these open conversations I think our world world changes it's mm. I thought I thought our generation was quote I thought I, I grew up with like hippie hippie parents like mm-hmm. accepting the world and mm-hmm. everything that's the but I realize growing up in my little microcosm of California and as I've traveled throughout the world in the last few years yeah. realizing okay that's not how everyone's being brought up so we have yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, work yeah, to do yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to hit our youth like that's yeah. that's our future and I know we've said that for a million years but really it is we need we need parents to 
instill these things or we have to yeah, it's and we have to keep the communication open. open. Yeah. 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 You can't just progress. not talk to people who think we differently have to stop than you. Can't. We have to stop canceling people. Yeah, afford people some mistakes to say stuff and be Absolutely. told they're wrong. That's one of the things you I love I mean? the most. And be like you're about, wrong, and like, can you not replay that fifty-five well, and, times? And also, no. like, I love going to Tennessee because yeah. there are a lot of people in Tennessee whose political beliefs I do not agree with, mm. but who I greatly enjoy and respect as human beings and I love having conversations about things with them because it allows me the space to understand where they're coming from and not demonize them because I love them Mm -hmm. and it helps me understand and I can let go of that a little bit and say okay we don't think of things the same way I understand, and we talk about it. I'm like, eh, I don't under, I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah. not a reason. It's not. It's not but we can come to party, a closer. Really. No, but we can come to a a, a place of understanding. more mutual understanding yeah. by having those conversations. A hundred percent. And that's what I, people need to do. Just talk to people. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not the With end of the world. I agree. I agree. But yeah, um, we gotta let people make mistakes. Though, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, and learn. Call, that's and how you call learn. people out big yes. time. Yeah, yeah. And then people need to take ownership. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely but ownership. I mean, um, I mean, if people want to see what an ally looks like, they can look at the UK. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and definitely. It's been so. like the biggest privilege of my life, truly. Right. right. And you know, like yeah. I mean, I speak to BIPOC and female and yep. brands all the time, yep. and. Um, I'm white, so I will not try to say that this has been hard for me, but I'm a woman. There were challenges. But when I see people of color and women of color trying to get into this business and looking around a room and realizing you're just not seeing anyone that looks like you, it's intimidating, Mm -hmm. it's hard, and it takes a lot to break through those barriers. And 100%. Yeah, it's a a time, tolerance. That's why, like, looking at what Fawn's done and then looking how people of the world's accepted Victoria and Fawn, like... I just want to see so much more of that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? there, there's a lot to be done, but a lot and has been at done. And looking your, yes. your badass wife as well. We got a shout out to her, too, you <laughs> know, Listen, doing her thing. I chose her, so. Yeah. yeah. Give me some. Yeah, yeah. It started, but full disclosure. Lucky, lucky full you. Disclosure, lucky full you. disclosure, full disclosure, <laughs> my friends will tell you when I met Miriam 20 years ago, yeah, I basically yes, told this yes. to my friends. I told her, like, this is the woman that he did, he did. I choose because I think Whatever I create, she will make it better. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. But more men like that, right? That want to see their women having success. So Fawn and I talk about this all the time. We always debate mm. who has a better husband. <laughs> and she and I go back and forth. We do. Like, okay. But no, it's not a debate. Sorry. It's more of like who's got a discussion. Like, no, it's more like it's actually it's not a debate. It's more of like you're lucky. No, you're lucky. Oh, right. like, they all love so how much they love them. their partner. We love yes. how much we all love each other. My husband, like I will every podcast I'm on, I always shout him out. He's always like, thanks for that. But truly, his mom, his he, his mom moved his brother, who was six weeks old, and my 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 husband, who was four, from Wisconsin to California, okay. um, like so young mom, and and like basically sold sales door to door. The boys like kind of raised themselves and like created this, built this business, and now she's an incredibly successful successful woman. And my husband watched all of that. He mm-hmm. was not going to marry or tolerate anyone mm-hmm. right. that wasn't in in a position where she wanted to drive. work and be yeah. successful. And so he fully supports it and yeah. he loves it and he wants that for his daughter and everything mm-hmm. like that so we mm-hmm. also there is a piece about partners like what you just said about like meeting Miriam like not every man is like that either yeah yeah, yeah for <laughs> you sure know, not every no, partner for sure, for sure, wants for sure. to see their partner oh, yeah. like fly and succeed and yeah. be that person yeah. either and yeah. I think that's yeah. an incredible. I think it's weird but you're right I, yeah, I agree yeah, it's, yeah, weird, I it's weird but more yeah. of yeah. it but yeah. I will say like ha- like John you know it's like everybody that I've met in this Recently, and in our group, like people, like their partners want to see them succeed. Absolutely, yeah, you know, and that's a big piece. That's supposed to be. So, so right? before, yeah, before we close out, because we had to leave, because our ride is waiting for us. Uh-oh. <laughs> so um, um, we're hungry. So this usually in this podcast, we finish by talking about TV shows and movies and whatever. Okay. okay. So before we leave, I just want to know favorite movie. Oh, oh gosh, favorite movie. <laughs> that's hard the one oh, question they won't so be so bad it's like so bad like I could go back to the 80s and John Hughes that's fun okay. yeah that's fun. or like La Bamba has anyone ever seen La Bamba <laughs> oh it's my I've never seen La Bamba I did so I fun. have you see now we're um, we're showing our age 80s John oh Hughes God. movies and like anything with um, like Jim Carrey in it okay cool okay like that's a, La Bamba's the one where okay. he dies at the end La Bamba he dies the, plane, the, the plane music's crash. so yes. good and the acting is minimal Richie Richie Valens yes what about TV show or right is calling we're coming down right now, okay? We're coming We're down right now. We're talking about very important stuff right now. Il n'y a pas de problème. On arrive, on arrive, on arrive. 
Okay. Something that happened Bye-bye. to me, they left. So oh, we'll just um, I will say the this. TV show that got us through all of um, COVID and still can put me bed at night is just The Office, like Perfect. plain and simple. Okay. Oh, geez. I am. Um, it would take me too long. Okay. I don't even know. <laughs> I gotta go to dinner. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Okay, guys. C'était le podcast épisode 200. Thank you, Kate. 201. Thank you, Lucie. No, Merci. 201. Don't Sorry. 201. <laughs> Thank you, guys, for coming. You guys are so dope for coming. Thank uh, you. Uh, you guys just came in into Montreal, and you're here, so that's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's so, guys, keep on liking, keep on commenting. Comment. Subscribe. Uh, le podcast. Before we out, cheers. cheers. Bye. Oh, I'm empty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will tag you guys definitely.